Welcome to First Garden, New Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. And I'm Holly Baird. And today we're going to talk about seeds. Seeds seems to be a, a common misunderstanding for a lot of new gardeners or even gardeners who've gardened for a couple of years about the different kinds of seeds there are. There's a couple of different categories. We're going to talk about organic seeds, heirloom seeds, hybrid seeds, and GMO seeds. So first we talk about heirloom seeds. Heirloom seeds are basically just a seed that has been passed down from generation to generation. It is uh, offspring of the original plant. So a lot of different varieties like tomatoes, you'll see a lot of heirloom tomatoes. So you think of something like the pink brandy wine that's an heirloom, or in the case of leeks, American flag leek, that's an heirloom as well. It just means that the seed hasn't changed at all. The plant hasn't changed. And if you go ahead and you save that seed, replant the next year, it's going to be the same that following year. Now organic seeds we're going to talk about is? Basically natural seeds. It means that there was no pesticides included when that seed was grown and therefore when it was harvested it was just pure natural. And so it's not quite an heirloom but it's organic. And let's talk about hybrids because hybrids is a word that kind of scares some people sometimes when it comes to seeds or plants for right. that matter. They can be very confusing. So basically hybrids is a result of two plants that have been cross-pollinated. And therefore, if you save that seed and you grow it again next year, it may not mirror that plant that you had originally. After about five to seven years, it will, but it does take a little bit of time. You will say you have a hybrid tomato. You won't get the exact same tomato the next year, but you'll still get a tomato. No, there's nothing wrong with hybrids. No. But it's a natural crop that gardeners have crossed naturally pollinated two plants. Now let's talk about GMOs here. And GMO stands for? Genetically Modified Organism. Now to some people, the average gardener, the new gardener, that can be scary because there's a lot of GMO talk going on in, in the world today. Now rest, be rest assured that there's, you're, the likeliness of you getting a GMO seed is basically zero because they're not available to the ever, average everyday consumer. Now what a GMO seed is, Sci uh, there are seeds that have been altered in a laboratory. For example, corn seeds, which is one of the most popular GMO seeds. They will take DNA from a salmon that swims in, let's say, Alaska, and incorporate that into the DNA structure of the corn kernel so it can be more cold tolerant, so it can grow in the northern climates of the United States better. Right, so it's basically just genes being spliced and DNA being shared, which, based on different research, is, is not is not good. Now one of the things you want might you want to be concerned with if you do decide to grow corn in your garden plot or your backyard is genetically modified corn because even though you may get corn that's organic or non-GMO there could be traces of genes in it and there's certain you want to go for a certain you want to go for heirloom variety yes. sweet corn. Now if you're in an area where there's a lot of agricultural fields around that air pollination from the agricultural GMO corn will cross-pollinate with yours, so you want to keep that in mind as well. For those of you that don't know, air, corn is pollinated through the air. But don't worry about it. Now, if, if whether you, wherever you buy your seeds, whether you do it at the store, at your local home and garden center, your, your hardware store, or if you buy online, you can rest assured that these seeds are good organic or heirloom variety seeds that you can plant safely in your garden. Now, you also want to think about when you're you know, planting seeds is, you know, keep it simple. Don't, you know, start off with 35 different varieties of seeds. You want to keep it very you know, simple that first couple of years until you understand how that plant or plants grow and what you need to do to be most successful with them. Another thing to think about is what do you eat? What do you enjoy to eat? If you enjoy eating tomatoes and cucumbers and squash, grow that. Maybe you think, oh, I want to grow okra, but you know, even never, never had okra or you don't care for okra, then why are you going to grow it? But maybe if you want to try okra, go to the store right now, you know, while you're doing some planning, buy a couple okra, cook them up or whatever you want to do with them, give them a taste. You know, you want to kind of test things out so that you can grow them successfully. Another thing to keep in mind is where you are in the country. There are certain things that you cannot grow because either the growing area is too, or the growing time is too short, or maybe you just don't have the proper amount of daylight, things like that. So like say avocados, they can't be grown in Wisconsin. And there are certain things in the south that can't be grown, such as certain varieties of onions that we can grow up here that people in the south can't grow. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So we want to keep it simple, and you can always find all the information on our website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and any questions you may have about you being a beginner gardener and advice you may need, you can always email us. At thewivegardener at gmail.com, which will have that information in the show notes for you, and we're more than happy to answer any of your questions you may have. So... 
whenever you're a new gardener, always learn from the mistakes you made because you will make mistakes. And we'll see you next time for more First Garden, New Gardener. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.